Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak to each and every one of you and welcome to the Ramadan Expo and especially to the Spa Interactive Cooking Theatre here at the Convention Centre where we shall be presenting gourmet dishes and easy dishes presented to you by some of our celebrity chefs who will be taking you through to step-by-step -step instructions as to how to present these dishes very quickly and very easily for the benefit of your family. So please do join us and enjoy. Okay, so tonight I'm making two mocktails. Mm -hmm. Does anyone know what a mocktail is? Do you guys know what a mocktail is? Okay, so for those who don't know, a mocktail is a replication of a norm of a cocktail but without the alcohol. So it looks funny and bloody, but it has no alcohol. So that means all of us can enjoy it. Those who don't drink, uh, it's good for health purposes for if you're doing juice beverage juice based be sorry juice based beverages so it's healthy and um, yeah it's just fun to have it on at any type of event i mean i know of people they go to work events and yes. they feel excluded because everyone else is drinking alcohol but they're stuck with a coke and a sprite and they feel left out so, so you're I making a sexy drink. Idea. Yeah, so we, we make it fun. There we uh, go. Make you feel part of, of, of an event. So today, what I'm going to start with is something called a virgin burrito. Most people is familiar with what, familiar a with what is. it is. Yes. Yeah. So um, what you will require is um, a shaker, a couple of mint leaves. And how difficult is this to make at home? Really, really simple. Uh -huh. It's not really necessary for a shaker, but if you don't want to break any glassware, uh, because you're going to require to muddle your your mint leaves. You right. don't want to break your glassware, so it's best to get a use shaker. A shaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you use a couple of mint leaves, and then we add some sugar. Course it depends on how sweet you want it or otherwise yeah. right um usually you just take one one teaspoon of sugar one teaspoon right the sugar is basically to release the juices in the mint leaves so this is called a muddle stick and you use the muddle stick to muddle your your mint leaves and your sugar together okay so, so the camera just wants to show the audience exactly what you mean by muddling that is muddling So you give it a good thumping yeah. and that's how the yep. sugar allows the juices and the flavor of the mint to be extracted. Exactly. So then what you do is, after you've done muddled, you get you something called a squeezer, a lemon squeezer or a lime squeezer in this case. Mm -hmm. So what we use is a half a lime for one glass of mocktail. Okay. Right. So you squeeze press the it juice back out. into the, mixed with the mint leaves. Yes. So this infuses to give you that mojito taste. Okay. Now I'll just put the lid on. You'll see on top of the lid there is what you call a strainer. Strainer, yes. So that it doesn't, um, all the, the mint leaves doesn't come in into your drink. Because into what the happens drink. is okay. if you're drinking from a straw, you don't want your mint leaves to get stuck in your straw. So I'm just blending the mixture oh, together. Oh, hence the infusions of the leaves. I understand. Yes, that's right. correct. And then add some ice into our glass a dollop of ice some lime wedges and then we drain the juice so you'll see that the lime juice is actually clean and infused with some mint we see that yeah and then we add some more mint leaves for garnishing and some more ice top it up with ice it's always nice to have a lot of ice in your mocktail. Uh, it gives it a refresh, it makes it refreshing. Yes. And also, a mocktail is something you want to sip on. A lot of people are not aware that you don't drink the mocktail in one go. Yeah. Otherwise, you could just buy you a can of coke and drink it up. You know. Indeed, so this is something so. that you take your time savor, and you enjoy it. Save the, the moment. Yes. Yeah. And then you and add you some jive now? lemonade. Jive, jive lemonade. Yes. That's and good topped it. up with jive lemonade. Topped up with jive lemonade. And voila. Voila. And then. The last final touch uh -huh. is to add some mint leaves on top. There we go. I think we have a pretty little drink. And that is your pretty little drink. Very, very simple. 
Oh, okay. So, before you drink, you want to stir it a bit. So, if you have a straw, it's ideal to stir with a straw. If not, you have, can get you a bartender spoon and we'll just infuse the flavors a bit more. Oops. And there's your virgin that's mojito. That's your virgin mojito. Oh, well done. So, tell us a little bit about Shake and Not Stirred. What do, so what do you do? Shake and Not Stirred was started back in 2015. Um, I'm the creative behind Shake and Not Stirred. Yes. Um, it came about at my 21st birthday when I was looking for a bartending company to do a non-alcoholic bar setup. There was and no that one was in the market. No one in the market, and I decided to take this up. Mm -hmm. So then I developed the first non-alcoholic mobile bartending service in the country. Oh, that's So something. there's no one else doing this service. So we come out, we do a full bar setup with bartenders, your glassware for any type of events, weddings, corporate parties, um, birthday parties, you name it, market days. That's an incredibly niche market. Yes. Um, what we've recently been doing is we've been doing a lot of collaborations with schools such as Grotesky High and Livingston. So whenever they needed, whenever, whenever they were doing fundraisers, um, we'd come on board and we then donate a portion of our profits of whatever was sold to the, back to the school. Oh, that's fantastic! And the kids love the mocktails. We've done Grotesky's fashion show, we've done the um, Valentine's Ball and mm -hmm. the kids enjoy it because it's, it makes you feel funky, if oh, I could absolutely. put it that way. Absolutely. It's not a normal Coke that you have anymore. It's something that, that you can enjoy, different flavors that come through. And it just gives you that Something dressed up. Yeah, <laughs> a, a dressed up drink. Yeah. And so do you have a, a business cards or something that the... Yes, uh, definitely. So, so we'll, we'll after, after the presentation, everyone yes. can come around. I'll leave some business cards here on the, on the display. And you guys can grab some and contact us for any type of event. Um, right. And then our next one? The next drink we're going to do is what the drink I specifically designed for today. It's called a Mango Mule. So it's an infusion. Mango Mule. Mango Mule. So it's the replication of uh, the cocktail, a Mango Mule, but with obviously your halal ingredients yes. or your non-alcoholic ingredients. So with this drink, we're going to use two parts mango juice mm -hmm. into your shaker. So that's your two parts mango juice and then one part orange juice and then a touch of lime. The lime in any drink brings out the flavor of the drink. So if you so feel you like add lime to most drinks, not to most drinks, but for those that needs a, a extra bit of flavor. So if the mango flavor was a bit too subtle, the lime is going to bring that out. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, I've learned something. So that so was about a quarter, about slice, a quarter, of quarter lime. slice of lime. Yeah. So then this drink is shaken. So as the name says, shaken, shaken not, not stirred. stirred. Okay. Right, so this just basically infuses the flavors the together. So it's the orange, the, the lime and the mango that's being infused. Yes. And then yeah. as usual our ice. ice. Fill your ice to the brim. Oops. We strain our juice. So that's the base of your drink, what you call right. the base of the drink. And then you add your ginger beer, which we're using ginger chive beer. ginger All beer. Right, okay. So a lot of people are afraid of ginger beer. But what I've done is I've actually changing the flavor of ginger beer. So you know you get that, that what they call the quetzal flavor of mm -hmm. the ginger beer that burns the back of your throat. Uh -huh. So is so that neutralized? Or it's is neutralized. That? Uh -huh. You taste the ginger beer flavor, but it's infused with your juices. So you don't taste that flavor in, anymore. Oh, that's very interesting. So that's called your mango mule. So and what's the idea behind the mango mule? So the mango mule was designed specifically, like I said earlier, was designed for this show. Yes. Um, and to what? I tried to change the flavor of ginger beer because a lot of people don't enjoy it. Um, 
my sister, my younger sister, doesn't like uh, ginger beer at all. Yes, neither do I. And then um, I told her she she I normally ask her to to do all my taste testing because kids, you know, they pull faces when something's not nice. Indeed. And they drink the rest of the so glass. She's quality control. She's not quality control. Uh -huh. So I asked her to drink this. She didn't know there was ginger beer in it. Oh Often really? she said, it tastes like ginger beer, but it doesn't burn my throat. And I said, yes, and that's the idea behind ginger beer. And like with all most mocktails, we add, a, we add some garnishing, garnishing, some prettiness. Right, so you can add your own garnishing in whatever colors you feel like, green, reds, just to break the color of the drink. And then obviously, once you're ready to drink, use we'll your bartending spoon, quick, quick yes. stir. And, and off, off we go. go. Well yep. done. Thank so you that's very your two much. easy mocktails. So if you guys ever need any any bartending requirements, you're having a wedding, you're having a birthday party, and you want to be different, contact us. We'll send you out to court. Mm -hmm. We can Is there a minimum different. requirement of people so that you would for? So for a full bar setup, you have we have a minimum quantity of 50 drinks for serving for a full bar setup. But if you're having an event, a small intimate event with guests less than 50, we do cater for you guys as well. So what we've introduced recently is our drink stations, self-service drink stations. So right. we'll come out, we'll bring out our drink dispensers, glassware, and we create mocktails for you in drink dispensers. So your guests so can actually tap. come and come pour their own mocktails. Oh, that's fantastic. Please, ladies and gentlemen, uh, make use of Shaken Not Stirred's services. And as he said, he will um, be distributing his business, business cards to you very shortly. If anyone like to taste this, I'm going to pour some in his glasses and they can just... I think, please do so, yeah. Just pop themselves. Pop some tasters here. That's enough. And please come and help yourself to some some testers. You want the mango flavored? Oh, there's an ice block falling in there as well. Where are your cards? Please come help yourself to a taster here of these lovely mocktails, fresh and refreshing. Made by Shake and Not Stirred. You're a mojito kind of guy. Everyone's a mojito kind of guy. Try the new drink. Whoops. You'll be amazed. So if you guys want any business cards, I'll leave them over here. Why not? <laughs> And what's the feedback? What does it taste like? Which one do you want? I think we've out of this glass. I heard you said mint. This one. Do you have another clip? No, we are currently out of. Can I do this? This glasses. Go for it. And I think that's it. Quite frankly. That's it. And as promised, we're going from hot. From cold drinks to hot drinks. With me, I have uh, Zark here from the uh, coffee club, and he's going to whip up some hot drinks for us. Welcome, Zark here. Ahlan wa sahlan, shukran. Mic on. On. Ahlan wa sahlan, shukran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to everyone here this evening. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Shukran for coming through. I hope we have a lot of coffee lovers in the house. Inshallah. Oh, I definitely am one. All right. It's a tool of my trade. Inshallah, Bismillah. So, so what are we doing this evening? So what we're doing is we're going to do a flat white or cappuccino. Same method, same brew method. All right, what we're using here is the Ranchilio Silvia. It's an Italian machine. And we're doing the Ranchilio Rocky Grinder as well. All right. All right. So what we're going to go through is from the very basics, we're going to go through to grinding and, and tamping your shot. All right, tamping your coffee grounds. You put it in the machine, you're going to pull a shot and then you froth up some milk and you pour your milk as Show easy as that. Show us how it's that. done. Cool. So what you require, of course, is your milk. You require some beans. Over here we have the Coffee Club's beans that's been roasted just three days ago. It's our Guatemala range and the El Salvador range. The El Salvador has notes of berry towards the end of the shot 
and the Guatemala has a warm dark chocolate in it. These are for sale at the coffee club for just 75 rand for a 250 gram bag. So this bag costs 75 rands? Yes. And your soul is to the right if I'm not mistaken? Yes, yes. It's All the way to the right, on the right. So here. these coffee beans are on sale at uh, the coffee club around the corner diagonally across from the right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So basically what we do is we begin with your, with your porta filter and get your grounds in there. Uh, I just need to have this grinder in. That's your grinder that puts your grinds out. Instantaneous grinder. And depending on how, you, how strong you like your coffee, you go from be between 7 to 14 grams of coffee. What happens is your fresh coffee is freshly right. ground from bean to ground powder in the and that's of course best way to have it, right? From There's no better way to have it than fresh coffee beans. With all due respect to all other coffee lovers and all other methods, there's no way better than fresh coffee. It's I, the way it's supposed to be. You. It's I the way it's supposed to be. You do that, that's just knocking it. And you have your tamper over there. You've just got to tamp down and get yourself a nice flat Oh, butt. they're drooling already. <laughs> and that's you just gotta, the roasted beans, the beans that have ground. You just got to go there. The key idea to all of this is that you've got to have a flat tamp. All right, you need the perfect grind setting. You need the appropriate temperature of water to brew through the espresso to give you that sort of syrupy color coffee that comes out of the espresso shot that okay. you pour. Bismillah. Alright, so once you've got that, you'll notice your puck is nice and flat and, and round and, and you've got and an easy firm. space all around, you nice get, and full, not too tight. The camera can have a look at this and we'll build up on there. And good stuff. So then what happens there is you get that into your machine and get your cup in there. So what we do is, this is cafe, cafe style, okay. it's basically to warm that up. All right, so you get some water in there. What this does is it warms your coffee up. Uh, it warms, warms your cup, cup up, up, all right? Yes. The trick to that is that your cup needs to be nice and warm before the espresso drops into the cup. Otherwise, people don't realize it, but your espresso actually gets a shock. You don't want to chop the espresso when you drop the espresso into a cold cup. Oh, so we're getting, uh, we're getting tips and secrets. It's really secret tips. It's cafe, it's cafe quality tips. That's oh, what excellent. it is. So it's for the, the optimum cup of coffee. That's what it is. All of these minor things make a huge difference oh, absolutely. on the coffee. You know, like as you'll see, what also happens here is while I'm warming that up, I'm getting the coffee, I'm getting the boiler in the machine to boil it up. Once it reaches boiling point, we bring it back down by another 30 seconds to bring it to an optimum temperature between 95 and 105 degrees Celsius within the machine. That gives you optimum brewing temperature of a pure Italian espresso. So once that happens, we get our porta filter in and we pull our shot. And the rising and dropping of the temperature is important for texture and taste. Uh, texture, taste and, and um, overall sweetness from the bean. Because if you don't pull at the correct time, you're not going to get the sort of syrupy, sweet, beautiful coffee that you're supposed so to get. So you'll taste all the tones then? You taste all the tones. Like I said, we're doing the Guatemala, so you'll catch a little bit of, you'll get hints of dark chocolate with notes of flora later on by second, third tip and so on. You make so the sound incredibly interesting. We have our, our, our cup that's so warming up. up. We just get our cup out. Nice and warm by now our temperature would have come down so we get that in lock it in and pull your shot you can get that in oh that's beautiful as you can see there's a yeah. very syrupy kind of uh, coffee that's coming out of there and you give that about 20 seconds and off you flip that off as you can see there, what you've pulled out is a caramelized cup of coffee that comes oh, out through absolutely. the... Absolutely. All right. Beautiful aroma. All right. You keep that on the top of your machine as all co coffee machines come with a warmer at the top. Heats it up. Right. Yes. So that's your steam button. So you switch your steamer on. That's going to prepare your steam for a few seconds and soon enough you'll be good to go. For the beginners in coffee and espresso making, we suggest thermometers so that you don't go past the, the, the extensive mid-range of the coffee. All right, because once you go past that, you tend to burn the milk, and once uh -huh. you've burned the milk, you have Sorry, a little bit of an issue. You want the milk to be. You want the temperature to ideally sit between 50 and 55 degrees Celsius maximum. 50 and 55 yes. degrees. Okay. All right. So we just test. We just test our machine here if it's if it's enough temperature. If, it, if there's enough, 
give it a few seconds for a little bit more power. While we're doing that, we can always clear our puck out. Remember, always clear your puck. That's the ground coffee, right? Go from the that's a knock box in which your freshly packed coffee that comes out. You can plug that back in. Just check your steam pressure all over again. Some nice steam pressure. And then you go ahead and steam. Uh, we steam up our milk to 50 degrees, 50 and 55 degrees Celsius. Yes. Alright, so what you do with this here is you're going to be brewing, uh, you're going to be steaming and steaming to try and fold some air in. That's the sound that you can hear, mm -hmm. is air being folded into the milk. Once enough air has been folded into the milk, obviously by some practice, yes. you continue, you just dip the, the steam wand in and it needs to continue to froth and froth until you get a nice thick creamy texture on the milk. It should look like wet paint. And of course, if the, the, the more creamy the milk, then the better the froth. Yes, yes, basically. And the sweeter it is. That's why on there you don't need sugar in your milk. What you basically need is, all you need in there is uh, a sweet milk. And that's what people miss a lot of the time is they like to add sugar yes. to, to, to their cappuccinos when you don't really need that. All you need is to, is to extract the sweetness out of the milk that's naturally there. So oh, you've got that, well. you give that a tap down there. Just clean your, your thermometer out if you're doing that. Go there, give that a tap and swirl that around. As you can see, that looks like wet paint. It does the sweetest it wet paint you might ever come across. Another secret, it's a pure barista secret, uh -huh. is that you got to swirl your espresso around. All right, we'll watch the swirling of the espresso. In order, in order to get your, your complete sweetness out of the espresso shot, you go there, give that a swirl. Are you going to show us some magic now? And some then pattern. hopefully so. Hopefully so. Hopefully, okay. Hopefully so. Your cappuccino. Oh, beautiful. Voila. Anji, that's your cappuccino. Well done. And our next thing. Right. Thank you very much. Anji, it's beautiful. And it's, it's a little bit hot now, so we'll give it a few seconds while we do a drip coffee, and then you can give it a taste and you can tell everyone what that tastes like, inshallah. Okay. Anji, next is drip coffee. Our drip coffee, what are we doing? Drip coffee that we're specializing in. We have a lot of drip coffee there. Where this originated in is Yemen in Hadramaut. All right, where the Muslims actually founded coffee and they would use fresh coffee and freshly brewed black coffee to, um, to stay awake at night for their sessions of the Hajjid and memorizing Al-Quran Al-Kareem. So what they would actually do is they would praise the coffee bean because they would say it's by this plant and by this bean that we actually memorized Kitabullah, the book of Allah. SubhanAllah. Jalla yes. Jalalu. So what happens there is you have, your, you have your beans which you need to freshly grind. Again, we'll do the Guatemala. The Guatemala. Right, okay. we'll do the Guatemala again. Yes. Get some beans in there. This makes one to four cups, the size that we currently have. Obviously, you can get many more. Mm -hmm. Just to be quick, I'm going to grind straight into there. Remember again, this is from bean to grind. Yes. So it's all completely, completely fresh. All right. And are you saying the drip uh, coffee process is an old one? Is that an ancient process, the drip coffee process? Yes, yes. It's basically... Uh, that off. It's basically um, it's basically the oldest method of doing it because like I said the Yemenis founded it and when the Yemenis founded it this happened quite a few years ago already right like a good a good 50 to at least 100 years ago and they would use this so what happens is you have your fil your, your freshly ground coffee in there your filter paper in, the in there cup, we're just yeah. gonna pack it a bit by dropping that in there yeah. right this is called a dripper what happens with your dripper is not it's not it's not a cup all right, so what happens with your dripper is that's designed to go over your cup like that. Uh -huh. All right, so what happens is you have that over there. Once you have that perfectly in place, you bring this down to the correct temperature. You'll notice that we switch the kettle off a little bit just to bring it just off boiling. So yes. just off boiling takes you again back to your 95 to 100, 105 range. Same so principle as the coffee machine. The same, yes. That's where you get your best extraction. If your temperature is off, you might not get the best extraction of your coffee beans. And you make bismillah and you pour slowly. Notice what happens is you got to pour really slowly over and give it some time for some gases to be releasing from the coffee. All right. Oh, it's really a drip process from start, yes, eh? Yes, indeed. So what happens there 
that could be called sort of teasing you just give you just give the uh, the coffee a little bit of time you'll see there's some steam as well as fumes and if you yes, come closer you I can, can have a bit of a whiff mm -hmm. of the coffee gases and so on that are coming out oh, it because looks, it actually looks like it's bubbling yes of what yes so that's that, those are the gases that are coming out from experiencing the fusion of the hot water coming out extracting all of your oils all of your nutrients and all of your caffeine from your freshly ground coffee so what happens is you give that about 30 to 40 seconds mm -hmm. And once that's oh, it's done, a beautiful aroma that's once, emanating from this amazing, cup. Amazing, amazing indeed. So once that's once that's done, and you've given that some sort of gas breathing time, yes. you go again and you continue to pour the. Air. Right. And you continue to pour and just give it some time to slowly absorb. So you have absorb. to pour and rest all the time, or can you continue? It's after just the two sip? times. It's just two times. You can just pour and then it will continue thereafter. You can rest, uh, that works by preference yes. and depends who likes it how. The best part about coffee is that you will have your own methodologies and your own methods and you will play around with what suits you best, yeah, what suits your tongue best and what really floats your boat, generally speaking. Absolutely, you know? some of us is like it's strong, some of us not so much. Yes, I don't know if everyone can get the smell of everything uh, as Front yet. Front row clearly can. And if it is, yeah, it seems so. So yeah. Thank you ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this portion of our show this evening.